Hi my loves, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi my name is Emily. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be diving into the one of the most exciting parts of The Sims 4, mods. I mentioned in my last video some things about mods and I've gotten a couple comments about how to install them, where to get them, and how to organize them. I only made the switch from console to PC this January so I was pretty new to the world of mods and watching videos like these helped me out so much we're gonna break this video up in five parts what are mods where to get them how to install them how to organize your mods folder and how to keep them updated so first off what exactly are mods mods are player created files that change or enhance your sims for gameplay these can include script mods that add new features, custom content, or what you might know as CC, like hair and clothes, and gameplay mods that tweak how the game works. An example of a mod is MC Command Center, and an example of CC is a custom hair or furniture. Mods enhance gameplay, like adding more realism, deeper relationships, better careers. They can do things like add new interactions, like slice of life, or custom after-school activities. They also improve immersion, including overrides and reshades, and fix limitations like autonomy and needs decay. Where to get mods? This is super important. Only download mods from trusted sites. Since you are downloading files onto your computer, there is always a chance that you could download a file that is dangerous to your computer. Websites like CurseForge, The Sims Resource, which is mostly filled with CC, and Patreon, where creators will create their own accounts and post their content there, are usually safe. I also like to download content directly from the creator's website. Like for example, Hey Harry has their own website, House of Harlicks, or Twisted Mexi has their own. Avoid sketchy sites and never download .exe files. Mods should usually be in .package or .the Sims 4 script formats. Something that I wanted to mention was that there's actually a mod to help you look out for other mods. This mod is called Mod Guard by Twisted Mexi, and it basically just looks out for any malicious mods that you could be potentially downloading on your computer. Twisted Mexi is a known mod creator in The Sims 4 that is very safe, and I think this mod is great if you're just starting out or if you're a little experimental with your mods and like to download from creators that aren't very well known. I think this is perfect for you. Try it out, see how you like it, and just be aware of what you're putting on your precious computer. Now for the most fun part, how to install your mods. For reference, I'm doing this on Windows, so I don't really know how it works on Mac, but I'm going to show you what I know how to do. And the first thing you want to do is locate your mods folder. To do this, you're going to click on your files application. You're going to hit documents. Then you're going to see electronic arts. You're going to hit that. You're going to hit The Sims 4 and you're going to scroll down to mods. This is where all your mods are going to be located. Yours might look empty. When you go on one of the websites, for example, Patreon, which I find the easiest, all you're going to do is hit download. You can direct where the download goes and sometimes Google will alert you that this download is potentially dangerous. I didn't get the alert on this one, but it can happen. Just be aware that Google doesn't really know what mods are, so sometimes it can give you that. It doesn't automatically mean that it is dangerous. You're going to click on the open file so you can see where the download drops in your files. I choose to have it dropped in my downloads simply because I download things that don't have to do with The Sims and obviously I wouldn't want those things going into my mods folder. So I like to have it there. You can see that it is has a little zipper. It's called a zip file. Now, 
When you see a zip file, it's a digital folder that compresses or shrinks files into one single package. It makes downloads faster and it keeps related files grouped together. You cannot drop this file into your mods folder. It will not show up. This used to happen to me when I first started downloading mods and I was so confused as to why it wasn't showing up in my game. You want to get rid of that. Think of it like a suitcase. Instead of carrying clothes separately, you zip them into a bag and carry just the one thing. Sim creators or mod and CC creators will do that so that it's easier to download and share. But again, your Sims game can't read the zip file directly. So you want to unzip it or unpack the bag. The way to do that is by right clicking and you're gonna scroll down to extract all. When you hit extract all, it's gonna ask you where you want those files to go. You can keep it the same place. You see that it automatically opens up that extracted file, but now you'll see a file that doesn't have that zipper mark on it. With that, you can drop it in to your mods folder and now it will show up. And I can see, you can see my unorganized mods folder, which is gonna look very different when I show you how to organize it. But here you can see that it is going to show up in my game because it's in my mods folder and it is unzipped. I mentioned earlier that mods should usually be in dot package or dot the Sims 4 script formats. I wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about what exactly those mean. So think of a package file as a custom item you can see or interact with in the game. Example of these would be clothes, hairstyles, and furniture. Script mods are written in Python and add new behaviors or change how the game works. Think of UI cheats extension and MC command center. This is a look of what the MC command center file looks like when you open it up. You can see that majority of the files in here are scripts because what do you guys know about MC command center? It changes the behavior of the game. You want to make sure that the script files are not buried too deep, meaning you want to keep them in the main folder or just one subfolder deep and I'll show you more what that means when I talk about organizing your mods. After we've done all these steps, you're going to want to open up your Sims game hit game options, and then scroll down to other. Once you hit other, you're going to want to make sure that your script mods are enabled and your custom content and mods are enabled. There is a button to see if you want to view all your custom content. If you have a lot, it's gonna take a while to open up. And after you've done all this, you're just gonna restart your game and then you'll have mods. Once you start downloading mods, it Loki becomes an addiction and they start to pile up. So make sure to organize them. That way you can keep track with everything. I'm going to show you how I organize mine. I don't know if this is the right way, but this is what works for me. All right, here is an overview of what my mods folder looks like. I did have to fix it up a little bit before I showed you guys. And you guys did see a sneak peek or a glimpse of what it looked like when I go through a phase of downloading a bunch of mods and I don't organize them right away. But here is what it's supposed to look like for the most part. There are some things that I just left because I was too lazy to completely organize it. But this is how I like my mods folder to look. Now, I don't know again if this is 100% the right way. I'm sure there is a way better way to do this but this is just what works for me and I see myself changing it in the future but for now I couldn't be bothered. So I organize my mods folder by three main things and it's going to be by build by, cast, and sometimes I, I'll say poses too but for the most part it goes build by, overrides, and cast. Three main parts. If I have a lot of the same creator, for example, you notice I'll have that L Sims World has her own folder or Kiara Sims 4 has her own folder, I like to add them all together. And the reason why I do this is because when you have 
a lot of the same creator they use a lot of the same meshes or they use a lot of the same things to create whatever they're creating and if there's something wrong with one of their creations or if there's something wrong with the creator most likely all of their creations will be affected so a great example of this would be kiara sims 4 in the last update that came out with the new pack i was having a lot of issues with my games my worlds weren't opening like it was a whole thing and i remember mentioning it in the video where it just gave me so many issues i did a bunch of research and i found out that it was kiara sims 4's mods that were affecting my game and what was great was that i already had an entire folder for her so i didn't have to go ravaging through my mods folder it was all there and i just deleted it out of my game and then when she updated it I put them right back in and it really really helps to have everything in one place because all of her mods or all of her at least career mods were affected and I didn't have to do too much for it. The way that I organize the rest of my mods for example is if we were to go into my build by folder. As you can see, I love to download my build by by packs. I do not like to do individual furniture pieces unless it is very specific in what I'm needing. So for example, you can see that I have Charlie Pancakes, who is a creator, and I have a bunch of their packs, or not really a bunch, but Telly, and then I have the Lighthouse. I'm sure I have some other ones that are just probably not that organized. I also have the fan art maps that all come in folders that I really should just blop into one folder now that I'm thinking about it. I will definitely do that later. But I also have um, creators like Felix Andre who has a lot of different CC packs that I absolutely in love with and I download them in packs. So here you can see Berlin part one through three, Chateaus, all of those are here and are so nice. And you can see here, like I'm not perfect, like I get really tired of organizing. So here are some ones that I haven't organized. Now, if you do see a lot of this in my mods folder, it is because I downloaded them off of CurseForge. Now, I don't know if there's a way for you to change this in CurseForge, but when you download from CurseForge, it will download individual instead of like it would download the file. For example, you see Felix Andre Soho part one. If I download this from CurseForge, it would download like Colonial did and separate everything. I don't know if there's a way to not have that happen, but oh well i'm kind of so over it because again this takes a very long time but this is how i like to organize my build by this helps me thank god cc isn't something that needs to be updated a lot just like mods do so i don't have to go through this too much but this does help if there is something that i don't want in my game anymore or what i like to do is i like to sometimes go through some packs and delete things that i might not need because it's just taking up space in my game and i'll probably never ever use it so it's nice to be able to go into something super organized and delete it this is similar to my cast folder but my cast folder is a little bit more detailed and honestly when i first started this i was very determined to make it organized and keep it organized but it has not continued to be like that so yours does not need to be like this but when i first started my organization journey of my mods i decided to organize my cast this way by doing accessories clothing hair household and these are a couple of creators that i have a lot of i have a random one and then i have skin if you were to click into hair you can see that i have a lot of the creator for example i have a folder for aladdin because look at how much hairs i have for aladdin so it just makes sense to have an entire folder for that creator ao hair so britney same thing and Johnny Sims, same thing. I have a lot of hairs from them. So that way I can keep them all in one place. And of course we have some randoms because we get tired, but it is really nice to be able to have it be this organized. Again, it does take time. It is very annoying, especially when you're going through like a CC shopping spree. It can be really annoying to put these back, but it is helpful. Another example of this would be my skin. I have 
organize this into beards, details, eyebrows, makeup, Northern Siberian winds because you know we love them, overlays, presets, and tattoos, and even the presets, I have them organized into certain things, but again, it does not, yours does not need to be like this at all, but this is just the way that I did it. Did take a while and it does help, um, especially if you do sim dumps a lot. Sim dumps, when you put them into your game, they will download a lot of things that you might deem unnecessary. For example, for me, when I download a sim dump, those sliders are like little pests for me. I can't stand them. I always take them out of my game. So having this allows me to see exactly what I need to take out of my game, especially like if you're, for example, in cast and you see a bunch of items that you don't want, having this organized can help you see that, okay, I need to go to skin. I need to go to makeup. I need to go to eyelashes. And here's what I need to remove from eyelashes. And I think that's pretty much it yes okay and then i have overrides here overrides are literally just a dump full of overrides of every override i think there's some that i even left out in here but it's just i just dumped all my overrides in here because thankfully they don't really need to be often updated the last thing that i wanted to mention was something that i had talked about earlier and that is about where to place your script files like I said, script files use Python, they change the way the game behaves. And something super important about when downloading script files is that they can only be one file deep. What does this mean? We're gonna take a script file, for example, like MC Command Center. Here you can see that MC Command Center has its own folder needed because it is a large mod. And here you can see all the script files. Now, this is one folder deep, meaning I cannot put MC Command Center into another folder that I would say, let's name script. The reason why I wouldn't be able to do this is because scripts can only be one mod deep or one folder deep, sorry, which means that if I were to put the MC Command Center into another folder, it would not show up properly in my game or it wouldn't even show up at all. Some mods are actually really great at detecting this. For example, I know Wonderful Whims, if you install it the wrong way or there's something off with your installation, it will actually tell you that. I don't know if it'll tell you if you put it too deep. I think it does if I'm not mistaken, but Wonderful Whims again is another one that has a that is a script mod. So if you put this in to another folder, it will not show up or will not work properly. And I actually think it'll give you notification for that. So you just wanna make sure that you don't do that. That was something that I also made a mistake in when I was first downloading mods. And I don't want you guys to be like, where'd my mods go? So look out for that. A part of having mods is that as the game gets updated by EA, they become incompatible with the new version and needs to be updated. Keeping your Sims 4 mods updated is super important to prevent game crashes, bugs, or broken features, especially after patches or expansion pack releases. When this happens, mods can start to get wonky or just flat out not work. They can also mess up your game in the most random ways. Most often, script mods need to be updated when the game gets updated. This includes things, mods like MC Command Center, UI Cheats Extension, Wonderful or Wicked Whims. Look up the creator to see if they put out a new update, or what I like to do is look up on Reddit and Sims Forum for mods that needs updating after a Sims 4 update. Sometimes it can be tough to figure it out, so I love using Twisted Mexi's Better Exceptions mod. This mod essentially does all the hard work for you, and what's great about it is that it doesn't really break like the other ones do. This mod will scan your entire game for mods that are incompatible with the new update. It will automatically open when you open up your game, and it'll produce a report for you of all the mods that are being whack in your game. It doesn't necessarily mean that your game is going to be broken immediately you just want to be aware of the mods that aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing because of updates better exceptions also comes with a menu and it can do things like locate outfit cc which is great if you have a piece of bad cc and can't remember the creator but can also check for conflicts mods can be conflicting with other mods so what better exceptions does is it scans it for you so you can know which mod is not allowing another mod to show up in your game 
This mod is such an amazing creation and makes having mods in the game so much easier. All right, my loves, we have made it to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know which video you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Fast and you do what you want. Like this, I'm doing.